Hello everyone, welcome to Analysis and Design of Algorithms. In the previous video lecture, we have spoken about what is meant by analysis of algorithm, what are the factors on which analysis depends, and also we have seen how to measure an input size. In today's class, we are going to see about the units for measuring the running time. When we talk about time complexity, we need a certain measuring standard which is going to help us in determining the amount of time that is required for an algorithm to execute. Now when we talk about uh, standards for measuring the time, the standards units of time are seconds, milliseconds and so on. But these uh, standard units of time like seconds, milliseconds, it cannot be used for an algorithm. These are used for programs which implement the algorithm. According to the uh, characteristics of an algorithm, algorithms are not dependent on uh, the speed of the computer, the quality of the program and the compiler used in generating the machine language code. Your algorithm efficiency is independent of all these factors or the time complexity of an algorithm is independent of all these factors. Hence, we cannot use the standard time measurement units like seconds and milliseconds. So we need an alternative approach. We need a certain metric or a measurement standard that does not depend on these factors like speed of the computer, quality of the program and the compiler used in generating machine language code. So how do we calculate the running time of an algorithm without these standard time measurement units? One approach is to count the number of times each operation of the algorithm is executed. An algorithm has several operations which perform certain tasks. Now one approach is to count those number of uh, operations of the algorithm. But that, that is a very tedious task because an algorithm may contain hundreds of operations and identifying and counting each and every one of them becomes difficult. Then how do we count? Then what do we do? Now one solution is to identify something called as a basic operation of the algorithm. Is to identify the basic operation of the algorithm. Now what does this basic operation mean? This is the most important operation of the algorithm and it is that statement that executes maximum number of times. All right. So basic operation is that operation or a statement of an algorithm that executes maximum number of times and since it executes maximum number of times that is going to contribute most to the running time of an algorithm. It is going to take the most amount of time uh, of our it is going to take the most amount of time in that running time of the algorithm. But how to identify it? We know what is a basic operation. We are going to identify that basic operation. But how to identify it? Is there any way or is there any factor that determines that this particular operation is a basic operation? Yes, there is a way to identify the basic operation. It is that statement which is present in the innermost loop of the algorithm. So, in your algorithm, whichever is the innermost loop, find out that and within that innermost loop, which is that statement, that is going to be your basic operation. So that statement or that operation, it is going to execute maximum number of times. For example, the addition operation while adding two matrices. Now when you add two matrices, there are two loops, all right, I loop and J loop. So inside the J loop, what is that statement? The addition operation that we perform for addition of two matrices. One more example is that if statement which compares two elements while sorting. Like for example, bubble sort. Inside bubble sort also the innermost loop or inside the innermost loop, there is comparison operation happening for two elements when we sort a list of arrays. So this is the way in which we identify the basic operation and using this basic operation we will be able to uh, calculate the time efficiency of an algorithm. Next we are going to see how to compute the running time of an algorithm. Now we have seen uh, how to identify the basic operation and how this basic operation is going to help us in calculating the running time. But there has to be a certain formula or a certain way in computing the running time of an algorithm using that basic operation. So there is a formula which is given here. T of n, this symbol is called as approximately equal to. T of n is approximately equal to COP multiplied by C of n, where 
t is the running time of the algorithm n is the size of the input for a very large value of n we cannot consider smaller values of n while calculating the time efficiency of any algorithm so n is the size of the input for a large value of n and what are these two things cop and cn cop is the running time required for the algorithm's basic operation like uh, addition operation of two matrices so what is the time required to perform uh, the basic operation of the algorithm that is using cop what is cn c of n is the number of times that basic operation executes for the algorithm how many times does that basic operation execute for that entire algorithm so this formula it gives us an approximate value when we compute the running time of an algorithm that is why there is no equal to symbol over here there is this symbol which represents approximately equal to all right so the above formula gives us an estimate of the algorithms running time just an approximate value next we are going to talk about order of growth what is meant by order of growth order of growth refers to how the time complexity of an algorithm increases as we increase the size of the input so the definition says measuring the performance of an algorithm with respect to the input size n is called order of growth we have seen how to identify the basic operation we have seen how to compute the running time of an algorithm using a certain formula over here with respect to the basic operation now we are going to see how the time complexity or time efficiency increases as we increase the size of the input so there are some algorithms which execute faster for smaller values of n but as the value of n increases they become slow hence the smaller value of n does not distinguish between an efficient and an inefficient algorithm okay if you want to calculate the efficiency of or uh, algorithm or if you want to compare two algorithms and find out which one is efficient then we the size of the n has to be always large it cannot be small right so based on this we have certain time functions and those time functions are going to tell us or going to are or are they represent the order of growth of an algorithm so this concept of order of growth it can be understood with some computing time functions so these are certain standard time functions which are already um, uh, developed or which have been already given to us so these time functions are as follows so using these time functions we can actually um, understand how the value of time increases as the input size n increases so they are as follows 1 log n n n log n n square n cube 2 raised to n and n factorial as you can see 1 is less than log n which is less than n which is less than n log n which is less than n square n less than n cube less than 2 raised to n and less than n factorial right so what do these mean what do these time functions mean what do they indicate and how do they help us in Uh, uh identifying or calculating the order of growth what does one indicate it indicates that the running time of an algorithm is constant regardless of the input size whatever input size you give to that algorithm the time or the running time of the algorithm it remains constant it does not change it doesn't become less it doesn't become more whatever input size you give so which is that algorithm which has uh, the time complexity or running time as one accessing the value of an array given its index suppose you have an array of 5 elements and i say access the array element with index value 1 if you have an array of size 100 and if i say access the array element with index value 79 so in such cases we say that the running time of the algorithm is constant it does not change regardless of the input size if i give 100 if i give 1000 if i give 5000 as input size then also the running time of such algorithms do not change an example is accessing value of an array given its index value next log n what does this time function tell it indicates that the running time of the algorithm is logarithmic which means that the algorithms whose running time is log n such algorithms solve larger problems 
by reducing the problem size. So where do we come across this situation where there is a certain problem size given to you and it is reduced and then it is solved. The example is binary search. So for binary search the running time of the algorithm is log n which means that it is logarithmic and search algorithms do not use the whole input size. It divides the input and then it reduces the problem size and then comes up with a solution. Next is n. What does n indicate? It indicates that the running time of an algorithm is linear for which means that when n is 100 the running time also is 100 units. If the value of n is 10 the running time of that algorithm is also 10 units. I am not specifying seconds, milliseconds, minutes or hours. I am not using any standard uh, time measurement units right I can just say units okay so the uh, time complexity of an algorithm grows in a linear fashion for example linear search next n log n the algorithms that have running time n log n are quick sort merge sort and heap sort such algorithms which sort an array in ascending order have the time complexity n log n. So what are the uh, algorithms that have time complexity n log n? Quick sort, merge sort and heap sort. Sorting array elements in ascending order. Next n square. It indicates that the running time of the algorithm is quadratic. So the algorithms that have running time as n square, such algorithms have two loops present inside them. Such algorithms have two loops present. So which are the algorithms that have two loops present? bubble sort, selection sort, addition and subtraction of matrices. So such uh, algorithms that have two loops present inside them have the running time n square or the running time is quadratic. The next one, next running time n cube. We have seen n square means that uh, the algorithms have two loops present inside them. n cube refers to they have three loops present inside them which means that the running time is cubic. So which are these algorithms that have running time uh, as n cube or cubic matrix multiplication from uh, multiplying two matrices we have three loops i, j and k. So such uh, algorithms time complexity is termed as cubic and also solving simultaneous equations. Those algorithms that solve simultaneous equations their running time is cubic which means that uh, if the value of n is 2, it is going to increase by uh, 3 times. So it's going to be 2 cube. Alright, it's going to be 2 cube. So it's going to be 2 into 2 into 2, it's going to be 8 units. If the value of n is 10, then it's going to be 10 cube. So 10 into 10 into 10. Right. So this is how uh, the time complexity is calculated. The next is exponential 2 raised to n. 2 raised to n refers to the time complexity of an algorithm is exponential. So the as the value of n goes on increasing, the running time goes on increasing exponentially. The first an example is Tower of Hanoi. So Tower of Hanoi problem, the time complexity uh, goes on increasing exponentially. n factorial. It indicates that the running time of an algorithm is factorial. What is the example of such uh, n factorial algorithms that generate permutations of a certain set. So wherever you have permutation and combinations of certain set there the time complexity goes on increasing by factorials. So there is a small table which is given over here there is this value of n and according to the value of n the time complexity of each of these time functions is reflected. The value of n is 1 log n this is log n to the base 2 okay just make a note of that this is log n to the base 2 value of log n to the base 2 is 0 n log n is 0 n square is 1 2 raised to n is 2 2 raised to n is 2 if I increase the value of n from 1 to 2 then what will be the value of log n 1 n log n will be 2 n square is 2 into 2 value of n is 2 so 2 into 2 is 4 2 raised to 2 is also 4. If I increase the value of n from 2 to 4, log n is going to be 2, n log n is 8, n square is 16, 2 raised to n is 16. If I increase it from 4 to 8, log n will be 3, n log n will be 24, n square will be 64, 2 raised to n is going to be 
256 so see here to it is increasing exponentially over here like if i say 2 raised to 8 it is it comes to 256 if i increase it to 32 then look at the values log n is going to be 5 n log n 160 n square is 124 2 raised to n is this value such a huge value i haven't written n factorial you can calculate and check what n factorial for these given values of n will be all right so you can see that n log n okay according to this table according to these value we can say that n log n is less than n n is less than n log n n log n is less than n square n square is less than n cube n cube is less than 2 raised to n and 2 raised to n is less than n factorial so this is what is called as order of growth of an algorithm with respect to the input size n as the value of n or input size increases the value of these time functions also go on increasing thank you